with an electric by the CBC and brought to you over CBUT through the cooperation of NBC and KOMO-TV Seattle. the drama of the Grey Cup begin? To some, the opening scene is set in the midsummer training camps, where the coaches try to assess the future recently signed rookies and the veteran who claims he still has one good year left. To those who stay at home, the drama begins with the champion's departure from Malton Airport, for these are members of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Traditionally, Toronto has been the home of the Grey Cup game. The University of Toronto won the first Grey Cup back in 1909. And since then, Varsity Stadium has been the site of most of the trophy contests. But in 1958, the game will be held in Vancouver as the final fling in British Columbia's centennial year celebration. This has been a year in which the diversity of BC has been saluted. Diversity as seen in the Pacific fishing fleet, framed under Vancouver's Lionsgate Bridge, the heavy laden fruit trees of the Okanagan, or in vivid contrast, the high topped timber operations of the Pacific Slope. Not so familiar, perhaps, but increasingly important are the rugged ranch lands with their hardy, pioneering cowboys. From Manitoba come the challenging Winnipeg Blue Bombers. The psychological contest has already begun with Hamilton coach Jim Trimble's confident remarks. Winnipeg's Bud Grant is more cautious in his campaign. And one of the 1957 Grey Cup heroes, Kenny Plain, stops to acknowledge Western greetings. All the while, the fans who have helped to transform the Grey Cup competition from a game to a festival are arriving by train to be greeted by the lilting music of the pipes. And Vancouver is ready too. The Firefighters Union has resurrected an ancient water carrier for use. And the siren is still found to be in good shape. By the Thursday before the game, all is in readiness for the friendly invasion of supporters from east and west. Shop windows change overnight. Everybody becomes a football expert and takes side. The street hawkers stock their stands with souvenir pennants, ribboned rosettes of team colors, and gray cups of all sizes blossom forth. By Friday night, the fever is reaching its zenith. The streets are thronged with revelers, and the hotel lobbies echo with cheers and songs. Saturday morning brings the Mammoth Grey Cup Parade, and leading the way is Century Sam, the symbol of BC's centennial year. Vancouverites and visitors alike have been lining the parade route for hours, and by the time the BC Lions mascot, 12-year-old Mary Stewart, comes cartwheeling along, there's not a spare inch of space available. There's glamour and music aplenty for the crowds, and there are impressive floats from all across the land. Nestled inside the Mammoth Grey Cup is the largest football ever built in Canada. Premier Bennett sits by as Lieutenant Governor Ross takes the salute. The Pacific Great Eastern Railway, now the third largest system in Canada, enters a float telling of its part in helping to open up the province. Sharon Lowe, Miss Edmonton Eskimo. The Stampede City of Calgary, the city that single-handedly provided the Grey Cup weekend with splash and verb, sends along their football queen, Marie Degree, and a large contingent of horses and riders. It was back in 48 that the Calgarians ushered in the modern Grey Cup festival, and 10 years later, they're still at it. Patricia Ann Rapita, Miss Winnipeg Blue Bomber. Miss B.C. Lyons, 
Sharon Durham. Toronto's float features their future city hall. The Prince George float, the largest and longest of them all, tells of spruce trees and hydroelectric power and presents one of the three original canoes of the Simon Fraser Brigade that made the trip down the Fraser to Vancouver, to say nothing of a bevy of decidedly modern can-can girls. The Wheatlands of Saskatchewan, with their Miss Grey Cup representative, Jane Wentz. There's football satellites from outer space, and from the depths of Lake Okanagan, there's the famous Ogopogo. Jackie Parker, Canada's outstanding football player in 1958. Landmarks of Montreal, Mount Royal, and Les Alouettes. There's a hearty hometown cheer for the Lions of British Columbia. And a potential halfback makes a fumble recovery. Sylvia Prue representing Ottawa in the Miss Grey Cup contest. The Oski Wawa man himself, Vince Wirtz, the nation's best known cheerleader and the embodiment of Hamilton's Tiger Cat spirit. Mind you, not all the spectators are Hamilton fans. An island unto themselves are the sporting fans of Victoria, with teacups at the ready heading for today's test match on the Empire Stadium pitch. Finally, Miss Grey Cup herself, from Montreal, 17-year-old Joan Van Boven, a dark-haired Alouette beauty who will reign over the weekend celebration. Speaking of rain, which is never done in Vancouver, brings to mind the famous tarpaulin. For the past week, it has protected the immaculate turf of Empire Stadium. And it's not until it is rolled up that a few showers begin. At the moment, the temperature is a pleasant 48 degrees, and as the grass soaks up the moisture like a sponge, the field is pronounced to be in good shape for the game. Some 35,000 fans are expected to watch today's contest in the stadium, while another four to five million will see it on TV or listen to radio accounts. It's a return engagement for Vancouver, who hosted the game in 1955, and a return engagement too for the 1957 finalists, the challengers from the West, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the champion Hamilton Tiger Cats from the East. The big four winners have been established as slight favorites to retain the cup. Under head coach Jim Trimble, the Tiger Cats won 10, lost three, and tied once during their regular schedule. They sat back and rested while Ottawa defeated Montreal in a sudden death playoff, and then in two decisive games, they controlled the ball easily to run up a total count of 54 points to 14 over the Rough Riders. They have depth, aggressiveness and deception in such players as punter Cam Fraser, quarterback Bernie Filoni, and fullbacks Jerry McDougall and Don Southern. The line with men like John Barrow and Angela Muska is heavy but fast, and they have fine specialists like co-captain Steve Onischuk. In the more rugged WIFU campaign, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, coached by Bud Grant, won 13, lost only three, and then waited while Edmonton downed Saskatchewan in the semifinals. The three-game final between the Bombers and Eskimos had everything. Snow and more snow. Two games split by identical scores of 30 to seven, and then a Winnipeg victory 23 to seven sent them to Vancouver. In 1957, they were hobbled with injury, but in 58, the medical report reads all healthy, including halfback and top kicker Charlie Shepard and rookie Jim Van Pelt. Van Pelt has had a Cinderella year with Winnipeg. A rookie from the University of Michigan, he got into the lineup when Kenny Plain was injured, and he's been there ever since. Plain, now on the bomber half line, provides Winnipeg with an added pass threat. Game time approaches. Referee Harry Bowden indicates the kicking and receiving teams to Buddy Tinsley and Herb Gray of Winnipeg, Bernie Filoni and Steve Onischuk of Hamilton. The official kickoff has Calgary's Don Lutze voted the country's outstanding lineman, holding the ball for Jackie Parker. And now to the game and Steve Douglas. Okay, Doug Maxwell, the opening kickoff by Winnipeg co-captain Jim Van Pelt. Howell and Macon are deep men for Hamilton. Howell has it from the 13-yard line. 
And he's piled up, hit hard by Tony Kerr of Winnipeg at the 28. First and 10 for the Hamilton Ticats. Quarterback Bernie Filoni calling the plays for Hamilton. He goes to the air on the very first one in the ball game. It's too long for Ron Howell to handle. Nick Miller and Norm Rahaus covered for Winnipeg. Another pass attempt coming up by Bernie Filoni, shooting for Jerry McDougal on the sidelines over his head. Gordy Rowland defends for the Blue Bombers. Cam Fraser, a short wobbler, coming down, bouncing around center field. And Ron Latourelle draws the Hamilton tacklers in too close. The tie catch are called for no yards. But there's another marker on the play as well. Winnipeg penalized for illegal interference on Thunder Cam Fraser beyond the line of scrimmage. So Hamilton retains possession first and 10 on the tie catch 31. Maloney looking, can't find a receiver, and he starts to run with the ball. Heads down the sideline. Cease Looney makes the tackle. Filoni, as good a runner as he is a passer, has nine and a half yards to his credit. Second down, inches to go. Quarterback Filoni keeps the ball. He's got a first down. The ball is on the Hamilton 41-yard line. Jerry McDougal cracks right up the center. Winnipeg veteran co-captain Buddy Tinsley holds him to six yards. Maloney's pitch out goes to number 70, Don Southern, newcomer from Ohio State, hero of the 1957 Rose Bowl. He got good yardage, and Kenny Plain finally put him down. On second down at the Winnipeg 48-yard line, Bernie Filoni pulls back the pass. Down the center, he finds Paul Decker. Keith Pierce makes the tackle, but the gain is good for yards. Ball in the Winnipeg 36, the Sun playing peekaboo behind the clouds. Filoni hits McDougal. He heads to the sideline. He is bounced out of bounds on the nine-yard line, and Gordy Rowland of Winnipeg is called for illegal interference, but Hamilton declines the penalty. Filoni moving to the right. The short basketball lateral to McDougal. He heads for pay dirt. Hamilton has a touchdown, moving 82 yards in 11 plays for the opening score. Credit Bernie Filoni and Jerry McDougal for that one. Steve Onischuk, Hamilton's co-captain, convert specialist, makes the point at the touchdown good. Hamilton has scored within five minutes of the opening kickoff. Southern boots it short for the Ticats. Barone receives. Hamilton is called for roughing. So the Blue Bombers take possession, first and 10 at Hamilton's 54-yard line. Maloney passed the first time Hamilton had the ball. Let's see what Jim Van Pelt will do. He's going to the air, too. But what a difference. Intercepted by Eddie Macon, but there's a marker flying through the air, and Macon is flying down the sideline. He goes out of bounds on the 23-yard line. The Ticats are called for illegal pass interference. Winnipeg has it first and 10 at the Hamilton 50. Nice making by the quarterback. Lewis, the ball carrier, and Harry Lampman makes the tackle. Three plays later, it's Winnipeg's ball on the Hamilton 35-yard line. There's a fumble in the backfield, the scramble, the ball is still loose. Ralph Goldson up and away with it. And he coasts the final distance for the second Ticat touchdown of the afternoon. Steve, this is turning out something like last year's game where Hamilton counted two quick touchdowns in the first quarter. Remember Bibble's bobble and his touchline trip? I certainly do, Doug. I'll bet Winnipeg coach Bud Grant remembers it, too. Honest Chuck for the convert. It's good. over eight minutes left in the first quarter. Southern kicks off. Lewis from the 18 gets back 10. And finally 13 yards before Pete Newman jolts him to a standstill. First and 10 for the Bombers. Pay dirt 79 yards away. Lewis carries. Good cutback and he makes eight and a half yards. Saminski and Macon combine to stop him. After Shepard adds four more for first and 10 at the Winnipeg 44. Here's Kenny Plain with the ball. And Pete Newman holds him to a yard gain. Tony Casillo of Hamilton injured on the play. That will be a tough blow to the Ticats. Casillo is a big key man in their defense. Van Pelt back to pass. He's nailed by Lampman. 
But Hamilton is called for offside. It'll stay second down. The ball now at Winnipeg's 50-yard line. Leo Lewis once again starts out, cuts back. He gets six yards and the first down. The ball carrier is Charlie Shepard right up the middle. Five-yard gain before Siminski piles it up. Kenny Plain has it. The rush is on, but he gets it off to Charlie Shepard. He's on the move deep in Hamilton territory. Macon, Campbell, and Golston triple team him. And the Winnipeg gain is worth 16 yards. Blue Bombers from their own 31, now at Hamilton's 31. Shepard carries again. Up the middle he goes, his third carry in a row. He picks up 11 yards. Now picture yourself on the Winnipeg bench. Here's the play developing, the handoff is to Lewis. He shoots back to quarterback, Van Pelt. He gets past one man at the sideline. Touchdown for the Blue Bombers. A 79-yard drive in just nine plays. Featuring Charlie Shepard, Leo Lewis, and Jimmy Van Pelt. Van Pelt's convert attempt is successful. Hamilton's lead is sliced in half. Here's the kickoff by Van Pelt. It's short to Ronnie Hollow, who takes it on the bounce. Gets back five, 10, 13 yards before Ernie Pitt stops him. And the Ticats start from their own 34-yard line. Quarterback Poloni is back. He shoots it down the sideline, intended for Tommy Grant. Knocked down by Pierce. Second down, 10 to go. Poloni tries the air again. Successful to Paul Decker, who makes a good grab for the first down. Pierce once again, the number one Western defender. First down on Hamilton Ticat 49-yard line. Coloni back. No receivers open. So he starts to move, heading this way. He is finally bumped into touch by Verona and Miller after picking up 12 yards. An exchange of kick follows. Neither team able to mount any offensive. The first quarter is over with Hamilton holding a converted touchdown margin over Winnipeg. Ball in the Winnipeg 37. Here's the action in slow motion as Don Southern tries his luck around left end. But watch Gordy Rowland come driving in and bring him down for a five-yard loss. Things like that make you appreciate the worth of a great Canadian defensive star like Rowland, voted the outstanding Canadian player in the WIFU. Second down and 15, Baloney keeps. Heads for the far sideline, and a crisp block by Billy Graham springs him loose for extra yardage. The play is worth nine yards. Third down and six to go. Southern tries a field goal from the 41-yard line. It is short and taken by Gordy Rowland, who is out to the 20. And the 25 before Lampman, Grant, and Graham combine for the tackle. First and 10, Winnipeg at the Bomber 25. Van Pelt juggles the ball momentarily, recovers, passes toward the sideline. Gilliam, the receiver, on his chuck, knocks him out of bounds on the 36-yard line. Winnipeg first down. Charlie Shepard picks his way through the left side and gets 11 yards before Ralph Goldston, a tremendous defensive performer for Hamilton, makes the tackle. Ball carrier is John Barone up the middle. Barrow and Underwood combine to stop him after he picks up three yards. Hamilton offside has given Winnipeg the ball at center field. Lewis on the move for six yards with Harry Lapman making the stop. And Pelt trying the air again, and a great catch by Ernie Pitt. The Winnipeg end moves the play to Hamilton's 37-yard line. Winnipeg started from their own 25. Fine football so far. The bootleg option, the fake by the quarterback, hides the ball on his hip and starts to run. Jimmy Van Pelt in action. It's past the first man, but Decker and Macon double-team him and bring him down. It is third down, two and a half yards to go. Winnipeg is going to go for it. 
The pass is down the middle. Gilliam all alone. Grabs it. Winnipeg has a first down at the Hamilton 16-yard line. Van Pelt back to pass. He's trapped. Amazingly, he gets the ball away into the end zone, and Ralph Goldson's last second back down saves the day for Hamilton. Second and 10, still on the 16. Van Pelt rolling out to his left, looking for receiver. Shoots down the middle. Pass intended for Gilliam is no good. Third down, still 10 yards to go. Van Pelt attempting the field goal. It's good, says referee Harry Bowden. Van Pelt has scored all 10 points. The individual Grey Cup scoring record, Steve, belongs to Jackie Parker. 19 points set in the 56 final against Montreal. Hamilton ball on the tight catch 35. McDougal carries. Kinsley makes the stop after a two-yard gain. Maloney shooting on the far sidelines, intended for Billy Graham. Maloney is four for eight so far today. Fraser kicking. Latorell receives it, and Bevan and Grant put him down at the 40-yard line. Van Pelt hits Leo Lewis, who is on the move. Goes down at the midfield strike, held there by Campbell and Goldston. Casillo has returned to action now in the Hamilton secondary. Green pass to Kenny Plain. He gets by two tie cats with a great burst of speed. And Steve Onischuk comes cross field down plane after he picked up 29 yards. Winnipeg deep in Hamilton territory again, and the crowd hasn't stopped yelling for a single moment. Shepard carries. Scott makes the tackle. Second down, five to go. There's the bootleg again. This time it's a pass intended for Ernie Pitts. He juggles the ball. He's hit by Eddie Macon almost immediately. Third down, still five. Van Pelt tries another field goal. He had eight for 18 in the regular season. That's his second one today. Winnipeg back in the ball game now, trailing by a single point. Hamilton fails to gain on the next series of downs. Fraser kicks to lateral at the Winnipeg 23. Leo Lewis carries there, knifes up the middle. Goes to make the tackle, and there are two markers down on the field. Winnipeg called for offensive holding. Hamilton charged with rough play. Umpire Taylor Patterson calls Golson for slugging, and he is out of the game. That could hurt the Hamilton defensive alignment, for Ralph is one of the top pass defenders in football. Penalty yardage didn't help the Bombers too much. They were forced to kick Ty Cat from their own 16-yard line. Maloney can't find a receiver. Dodges around in the backfield and finally is tackled for a three-yard loss by Winnipeg's great lineman, Herb Gray. Coach Trimble talks to Captain Steve Onischuk. Time running out in the first half. Filoni back to shoot, a long one. Intended for Ronnie Howell, Miller and Rawhouse. Have it covered. Third down, Hamilton 13 to go on the 13-yard line. Are you superstitious? Norm Rawhouse first through the right side of the Hamilton line. He recovers in the end zone. Normie Rawhouse, Winnipeg Rookie of the Year in 56, playing his third year with the Bombers, puts his club in the lead with a dramatic and sensational last-minute touchdown. Van Pelt convert is good. The half ends. Winnipeg goes into the lead for the first time in the game, 20-14. Well, Steve, that final play of the first half will no doubt change the tenor of both coaches' halftime oratory to say nothing of the stretch comments of the fans. But for the next few minutes, let's relax from football and enjoy the splash and splendor of the halftime pageantry. Here's the championship Bellingham High School Band, supported by the Vancouver Band's majorettes and cheerleaders. A series of tableaus honoring the various regions of Canada is climaxed by a salute to the B.C. timber industry. Now it's the turn of the BC Lions cheerleaders as they trot out a snappy routine featuring mascot Mary Stewart. The band under the direction of Dal Richards and their high kicking chorus line.
The excited crowd indicates its appreciation of the spectacular as they settle back in anticipation of the second half. See, that was a tremendous first half of football. I think we'll remember it for a long time. Goldston's fumble recovery and touchdown. The play of Jimmy Van Pelt at quarterback for Winnipeg. And finally, that block kick by Normie Rawhouse. What's your reaction? Well, Doug, so far, I'd say it's the best Grey Cup battle I've ever seen. Rock'em, sock'em type of football at its very best. Everybody here wonders if the boys can keep it up in the second half, and we'll soon see. Van Pelt kicks off for Winnipeg. Tommy Grant, the Big Four Rookie of the Year in 1956, has it. And he's back almost to the 35-yard line before Walt Felicki brings him down. First and ten for the Ticats. They trail by six points in this ball game. Jerry McDougall gets the call from Filoni, and he carries for five yards. Gordy Rowland and Dave Burkholder combine to stop the play. Second and five. Filoni back to pass. Can't find a receiver. Starts to run. Throws a basketball type pass to McDougall. That is incomplete. Filoni is now kicking for the Tie Cats in place of Cam Fraser. And Ralph Tui bounces Latterell down on the Winnipeg 36-yard line. Ball carrier is Leo Lewis. He gets four yards before Scott and Saminski combine on him. Jim Tremble is the warrior. In slow motion, a good chance to watch the line play as John Verone, rookie from the University of Miami, picks his way through. A 10-yard gain and a first down at the Winnipeg 50. Verone, the halfback, who replaced the injured Jerry James midway through the season. Lewis once again for the Blue Bombers. There's a loose ball. Recovered by Don Southern of the Ticats. A break for Hamilton, first and 10 on the Ticats 50-yard line. Sixty yards to go for a major. Filoni on the run. He gets five yards before Varone pumps him down. McDougall carries to the tie catch. Roland upends him. One yard is the gain. Trimble keeps Filoni in to do the kicking. But Filoni gambles and pitches wide to Milt Campbell. The 56th World Decathlon champion turns on the speed, reverses the field, outlegs a couple of defenders, and is finally down by Gordy Rowland at the bomber 28. And Campbell takes exception to the Winnipeg players' actions. Ball carrier is Jerry McDougall. He's hit hard by Dave Burkholder. And Winnipeg is penalized for rough play, and the tie caps are knocking on the door again. Maloney fakes the handoff. Dropping back in the pocket to pass, he spots Ronnie Howell deep in the end zone. Throws for him. Howell has it for a touchdown, and the score is tied. Chuck kicks the convert, and the Tie Cats are ahead by a single point. Here's the kickoff by Don Southern. Kenny Plain on the receiving end gets back to the 35 yard line before DeNoble grounds him. For the Blue Bombers, it's Charlie Shepard on the move. Saminski makes the tackle. Coach and quarterback confer in front of the Tie Cat bench. Second down and six. The handoff is to Lewis. But the Blue Bombers are being called for illegal interference over the third stripe, and the penalty puts them back to their own 29 yard line.
Barone is the ball carrier. Decker and Macon on the tackle. Charlie Shepard set to kick. Hunt is taken by Eddie Macon. There's a fumble, and the loose ball is recovered for Hamilton by Bobby Dawson. First and ten for the Tri Cats on their 33. Maloney's pitch out is fumbled by Jerry McDougall. The ball recovered by Winnipeg Gordy Rowland, a Montreal native who's playing his fifth year with the Bombers. Winnipeg has another scoring opportunity. From the Hamilton 23, Kenny Flynn takes the handoff from the quarterback, and just before he's hit, he shoots for Charlie Shepard near the sideline. It is completed. Dawson makes the tackle for the tie catch. The play covers 17 and a half yards. First down and goal to go for Winnipeg, trailing by a single point. Five minutes left, and Lewis is swarmed under. The defensive charge led by John Barrow. Again, good for one yard. Shepard is the ball carrier, but the tie cats are offside, and that moves the ball half the distance to the goal line. Second down over again at the two and a half yard mark. It's Charlie Shepard. Leading scorer this year with 76 points counts his first touchdown in this year's Grey Cup game. Van Kelt's conversion is good, and Winnipeg is back into a six point lead. The Bombers' kickoff is taken by Eddie Macon on the 21 yard line. He's brought down by Ernie Pitts at the Hamilton 37. McDougal straight up the middle and he bowls his way for seven yards before Keith Pierce makes the stop. McDougal carries again the same play. This time Warren brings him to earth. Milt Campbell over left tackle. Hamilton ball on the Winnipeg 49 yard line. First down for the Tie Cats. Maloney back. He hits Paul Decker down the middle. And Normie Rawhouse makes the stop. Maloney fakes the handoff beautifully. He's looking deep and aiming for Ronnie Howell once again, close to the goal line. Howell is behind the last Winnipeg defender. Touchdown, Hamilton. Six plays and 72 yards. The vital statistics on that scoring drive. On his touch conversion point, gives Hamilton a one-point margin. Touchdown number two for Ronnie Howell, voted the outstanding Canadian in 1958. The kickoff by Mixer, taken by Kenny Plain. Tony Casillo makes the tackle for Hamilton at the 42-yard line. This type of play produced a touchdown for Winnipeg early in the ball game, but this time the pass by Lewis is too far for Ernie Pitts. The game is now into the final minutes of the third quarter. Jimmy Van Pelt, no receivers open. He decides to run with it. Driven into touch at the Hamilton 52. First down, Winnipeg. And off is to Leo Lewis, starts outside, cuts back, makes six yards before Angelo Mosca makes the tackle as the third quarter ends. Winnipeg ball on Hamilton's 46, second and four. John Barone flashes up the middle for eight and a half yards. Harry Lampman grabs him at the 37. Van Pelt passing to Lewis. He is hit almost immediately by Eddie Macon. A Hamilton penalty moves the ball to the 25-yard line. First and 10, Winnipeg. 
Hamilton putting the big rush on Van Pelt. He passes. Honestuck tries to knock it down, but Plain gets it. And he's finally dragged down on the one-yard line. The crowd is going crazy. Quarterback Van Pelt asks for quiet. A scarce commodity right now. On the quarterback sneak, Van Pelt into the end zone. Winnipeg touchdown. Again. Steve, that means that Jim Van Pelt has surpassed Jackie Parker and has a new Grey Cup scoring record in his pocket, 22 points. On the kickoff, Tommy Grant is the Hamilton receiver. He gets back to the 25-yard line where Pitt stops the action. Milt Campbell into the left side of the Winnipeg line, but the line stiffens. He is held to no gain. Maloney going back to pass, trip. Patrick and Looning make sure. Hamilton with a five-yard loss must kick. Fraser into boot again. Roland to receive a 44-yard kick, and Roland comes back six yards. Blue Bombers ball, Van Pelt back to pass. Throws to Ernie Pitts, and the bomber end high steps it down the sideline. Past a number of Hamilton defenders, and goes all the way down into the end zone for an apparent touchdown. But the officials are calling him out on the 31. Did he go out? Let's make sure. Here it is in slow motion. Van Pelt with the ball. There's the pass. Pitts has it. Sidesteps the first would-be tackler. And the second. And he gets by the third Hamilton man. But he steps on the sideline before he evades the fourth and fifth would-be tacklers and goes into the end zone. And the officials who do a fine job in this great football game have the exact spot pinpointed. First and 10, Winnipeg on Hamilton's 31. Charlie Shepard up the center for four yards. There's the bootleg in the other direction. The pass intended for Gilliam is no good at the five-yard line. That makes it third down and seven to go. And Winnipeg will go for the single. Charlie Shepard back. He holds the Western record for the longest punt, 92 yards. He gets a good one away deep into the end zone. And the Bombers are ahead by seven points, meaning it will take something more than a converted touchdown to beat them now. Another exchange of kicks, and there's only about three minutes left. Tie cat possession, first and ten on the Hamilton 26. Maloney racing the clock, picks out Ronnie Howell. He's almost at the sideline. He makes the catch, stumbles, and Rawhouse comes in to make the tackle for Winnipeg. First down, tie cat at Hamilton's 45-yard line. This time the intended receiver is Eddie Macon. A great catch. He appears to be trapped, but shakes himself free and adds seven more yards before Roland gets him at Winnipeg's 42. Maloney back to throw again. He looks for Paul Decker. And completes it on a leaping grab. Three Blue Bombers converge to make the stop. The play is deep in Winnipeg territory at the Bombers' 24-yard line. Here's another pass attempt by Filoni, but the big rush is on by Buddy Tinsley, and the pass is off the mark, intercepted by Norm Rawhouse, who's been a tower of strength defensively for Winnipeg.
Winnipeg ball, the Blue Bombers 23 yard line. Charlie Shepard. Up the middle, first into the clear. And only the decathlon champion, Milt Campbell, has the speed to gain on him. And Campbell's dive and the tackle. And Winnipeg is out to the Hamilton 40 yard line. And a look at the rival benches presents quite a study in coaching concentration. Winnipeg ball carrier is John Verone. Honest Chuck dives in for the tackle. The ball squirts loose. Hamilton players dive for it. Vince Scott makes the recovery. in the stands are just as keyed up as the players as we're into the final minute of play in this ball game. Maloney back to pass again. Couldn't find a receiver. There's big buddy Tinsley, the great Winnipeg line star, following the play up and helping out on the tackle. On the Winnipeg 46 yard line, Maloney back to throw again. Hinsley and Gray have got the big rush going. But they bump into each other and Filoni gets free. He shoots long down the sideline. Tipped by one defender into another's arms and finally latched onto by Kenny Clan. About to be tackled, a lateral to Normie Rawhouse and here he comes. down on the 18-yard line, and two markers plus the football protest that Hamilton's piling on. There's time for just one more play. Jimmy Van Pelt falls on the ball. There's the gun. The game is over. And that shot was the signal for Western fans to really whoop it up. Winnipeg has won the Grey Cup. The Bombers, 35. Hamilton, 28. Steve, I'm sure it'll go down as one of the all-time thrillers in Grey Cup history and a game that players and fans alike will remember for many, many years. Co-captain Buddy Tinsley receives the Grey Cup from Commissioner Sidney Halter. This is the fourth Grey Cup game for Tinsley, but it's the first time he's had his hands on that trophy in the nine years he's been with Winnipeg. Coach Bud Grant has good reason to be happy today. Two Grey Cup appearances in his first two years as Winnipeg coach, and this year, a national title. The game had many stars. Two great quarterbacks, Jim Van Pelt and Bernie Filoni, Norm Rawhouse, a fine Canadian defensive ace, and Ron Howell, Hamilton's outstanding halfback. Herb Gray, Charlie Shepard, Leo Lewis, Jerry McDougall, Milt Campbell, Steve Onischuk, and a host of others. And with the game over, Hamilton coach Jim Trimble takes that traditional lonely walk to the Winnipeg dressing room to congratulate his opponent. It was a sensational game, a game of excitement, daring, and scoring thrills right to the last minute of play. And inside the Winnipeg dressing room, the cup is passed around among the new owners as final proof that the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are champions of Canada for the next year. And in years to come, from coast to coast, Canadians will remember this game as the thrilling climax of 1958's Grey Cup Festival. <laughs>